My brother died of obesity. He was 500 pounds when he died. And he was my best friend. I'm Allison Turak. I am from Mesa, Arizona, and I'm 319 pounds. Grew up in a fairly traditional home. My mom stayed home with us. My dad is was a business owner. I always knew at the end of the day that I had a safe place and my parents loved me. We've all struggled with weight our whole lives. In high school, I'm, I think I was about 315 pounds. The highest I ever got in weight was 400 pounds when my oldest was one or two. My siblings, some of them were thinner until they got older, and but we're all classified as obese now. In March of 2010, my parents lost their home to foreclosure. And that kind of started a chain reaction of just this weird time of our lives. And my dad got really sick and he had to be rushed to the hospital. And he was bleeding internally was in the hospital for a long time and he never really got out of the hospital from that point on and it was less than a year or just a little bit more than a year later that my brother passed away and then it was 18 months after that that my dad passed away the morning I found out my brother died the previous night I kept having this weird anxiety I had a hard time sleeping that night. I just kept tossing and turning and tossing and turning. The next morning, there's a knock at my door. It was my oldest brother, Chad. And he had a look on his face. He's all, Allie, I need you to go get mom. And I could see his face was very different. I said, what's going on? He goes, just go get mom. I said, Chad, what's going on? And he just stopped and he said, Brian's dead. to tell my mom, which was, no mom should have to go through that. I am tired of excuses. I'm tired of feeling like I am doing something wrong for being here for me. I am tired of not having integrity for myself. I am just at a point in my life that I'm here for me so that I can then help my daughter realize that she doesn't have to go through the same junk that I went through and I can teach my sons how to respect people in their lives and so I can help others feel empowered that just because you're plus size doesn't mean you don't have value. The day of the weigh-ins, I was a little bit nervous just because it's always nerve-wracking to have to weigh yourself and what if that number is not as low as you thought it was going to be or if you've put in all the effort and it still isn't what you want to see. Starting sure. weight is 319 pounds. Perfect. Step on the scale. Oh, don't suck. There we go. Not bad. Not bad. Right? We're down five. Okay. How do you feel? Um, to be honest, I'm a little disappointed. When I got on the scale, I was actually a little bit surprised. I wasn't overly thrilled with it. When we started, I'd gone up a couple pounds, which they said is normal. It still kind of sucks, but it's good. It's good. It's, it's good, progress. It's it's yeah, fine. it is progress. It's fine. But a loss is a loss, and it's all about keeping going forward and not giving up. How's it been at home eating and everything? It's been a struggle. Meal What's prep. Well, just meal prep is hard. Yeah. Because of the kids at home and the husband at home and mm -hmm. life at home and. I got home yesterday and there was pizza on the counter and I was okay. like, mother, let's put okay. freaking pizza away. Okay, so we got but I didn't eat it. Didn't eat it good because that's going to be a trigger for you when you go home stressed and there's the pizza or there's any kind of treat. You know what I mean? It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit you and you're not going to be more necessarily mad that you gave in or anything like that. You're going to be more mad about your personal integrity. You know, you go in these small steps forward, big steps back, and you just get comfortable. And then struggling with 
finances, it's easy to compromise and to say, I can't afford this, I can't afford that, I can't do this, I can't do that. We gotta get everybody on board, you know? I think maybe we sit down, and if you want me there, there too, I can help explain. And be like, hey look, going through this, having pizza at home, like just coming home to that, it, it, it doesn't work right now. Let's get to a point where it does work. But right now, let's not have it. Because I know that will be, that's gonna be the biggest difference for you and this thing will start dropping like crazy. Okay, so today I figured while I'm here with Allison, I would teach her how to meal prep because this is such a big part of the journey as Bruce knows. Allison has kids. Um, so I think today we're gonna talk about the staples of what makes a really successful and simple and convenient transformation because as we know, abs are made in the kitchen. Do you know that? Abs are made in the kitchen. Abs are made in the kitchen. How many kids do you have again? Three. Three kids. I have four kids. That's a lot of kids. If it's not easy, if it's not convenient, the transformation's not going to happen. So two things I want to focus on today. Number one, convenient grab and go foods are very important. And number two, being able to bulk prep for your entire family at once. Okay. You need to have a array of things like these low carb, um, high protein yogurts. I love Greek yogurt. It's amazing having them on hand. Of course, you know, protein's important at every single meal. Uh, you're going to want to make sure you have those, um, as, as well as making sure you have eggs, string cheese, any sources. And when I say string cheese, the low fat string cheese, any sources of protein that you can grab in a pinch and go with. Now that is for the protein. When it comes to carbs, I do a ton of bananas, ton of bananas, ton of fruit, rice cakes, we don't have any here right now, but rice cakes are gonna be your best friend when it comes to that because it's just something you can grab quickly. If you're feeling like you need to munch or eat something, you can go with those rice cakes. Also, keeping tons of vegetables on hand because as you know, in our plan, the way that we do it, veggies are free, right? You still do that with them, right? Yep. Veggies are free food. So when you're hungry, Bruce loves to grab a cuke. Grab a cuke, baby. <laughs> There's a reason he has a lot of them here. And asparagus, you really, really good too for flushing out the toxi toxins in your body. A really great food. This is a great one to bulk prep. What are your favorite foods? I want to know. We love Mexican food in our house and pretty much Mexican food. <laughs> okay. You know what makes me so happy about that is that when you are bulk prepping, you're going to do all the lean meats that you can and you're going to add salsa to all of it. So no matter what you're eating, get yourself some corn tortillas, Get yourself some low carb tortillas right yes, here. Yes, there we go. Bowl. Low carb tortillas. We got some jasmine rice, right? You can buy this stuff in bulk. See, it's funny because people always say that eating healthy is expensive. Eating healthy is actually super cheap when you do it the right way. The easiest thing you can do for your kids, and it, it's so simple. You'll literally take a big package of chicken like this. You can either do an Instapot or a crock pot. Put all of the chicken in there. You don't even have to think. Get a jar of salsa, two if you want, because it doesn't matter how many you do. Pour it in on top of, and hold on. Come on, Bruce, where's the finished product? Oh, this baby. is very Food Network. Voila. So it's just, and look how much this makes. This is one package of chicken. How long does it take in the Instant Pot? 20, 20 minutes? minutes. You spend 40 minutes. You're literally spending five minutes total because you're putting it in the crock pot, pushing start once, 20 minutes later, taking it out, putting more in the crock pot, pushing start twice right? And that's yeah. it. And you'll have a massive Tupperware full that will last you guys days. I'm telling you, like for me and my goals, if I don't make it something that I can open up the fridge, grab the food out, put my food on the scale, weigh it and eat it, it's just not going to happen. If you don't know what you're eating, there's no way to know what to change the next week. Right. Are you tracking your food right now? No. I know. I know. I know. It's so hard. What's, for me. what's the hardest part for you? Um, meal prepping. <laughs> Do you see how easy that is? I know, I know. That, no, it's now so it's easy. easy. How, how's your weight loss been? Since the show Two. actually started, I've lost 10 pounds. Okay. So I'm surprised you've lost 10 pounds not tracking your food. I kind of just thought that if I ate food that was on the list, then it was fine. And Heidi pointed out that if you don't track your food, then when you get to a point where you plateau or you gain weight, you can't go back and see what happened. It's going to be really hard for you to carry it on if you don't know what's going yeah. in and out of so, your body. And if you're tracking your food, you can go back and see exactly what your intake was and what needs to be adjusted. So it's something that I have committed to and I've started doing that because now I understand 
the importance of it and the why behind it. Today we are headed to Sunshine's Boxing Gym. We get to do something a little bit different and fun for our workout. So we're all really excited. Okay, one more time, up and back. So remember, don't walk on a tightrope. Imagine a line going right down the middle of you. You want to walk on either side of it without touching the rope. We were here at Sunshine Boxing today, able to come in and work out. They invited us in. It was an awesome experience. We we'll had Sunshine. She stepped in and she showed us um, how to box and everything. She's won many a title. You walk in and I mean, it's just like, boom, champion all over the place. So it was cool to learn and just kind of jump in there and be with them, you know, be with them for a bit. All of us were dripping sweat during this workout. I feel like boxing is underestimated just because there's so many technical things that go into it. I would do it again. It was fun and it, it really gets your adrenaline going. Right guys, switch, find a new spot. Oh, you're gonna hold it? Yeah. <laughs> Taking on frustration. You said you wanted to do this today. Cause I know you got a lot of built up frustration. There you go, come on. Come on. Bruce taking the time to come and hold the bag for me so we could have that one-on-one -on -one because he knows that that's something that I've been struggling with to like get my frustrations out. What's one of the things you're most mad about? Dig deep. You know it. What about your brother? Yeah. We're just talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Your family. You're doing this for them right now. For him right now. Your marriage right now. All of it. All of it. Let it out. Let it out. Allison, I want to fit in and be like your best friend like your brother was, and I mean that from my bottom of my heart, and you know that. It was a big part of your life, and I guarantee you he's down here smiling right now. And I know that's one of the biggest things for you right now. Come on, come on. It's hard for her right now, and I think it's a whole new realm of, of taking on this world, and, and she really wants to change, and that's what's amazing about her right now. But she shows up every single day, she shows up with this group, and she puts her best foot forward and takes it one day at a time. We had to weigh in with Allison and I brought up like if I should come in and help talk to her husband to kind of get on board. At first it was just kind of up in the air. We talked a little bit about it on our shredders that we always do in the mornings. You know, she wasn't quite ready yet. But as this transformation goes, you start to realize that you build the confidence and you want to be all in. And that's what she was basically saying. Is she wants to be all in on her own transformation, right? And in order for her to do that, it's also to bring in, rallying her team, bring her family in. So um, we set up a meeting. I'm also going to have Heidi join us because she's been through a lot with this situations as well. So it kind of gives a little more of an outside perspective of it all. And so we'll see how it goes. I think a way to kick this off is like, obviously we've talked, you know what I mean? And obviously this 90 days, we want to take full advantage of like what we're doing. And we focus on the, the, not only the physical part, but like also rallying your team. Going through what I went through as a kid, getting sexually abused from my father and stuff like that, I had to find a whole new team. I had to figure out what love was really all about. And I didn't realize all that time where I gained all the weight and why it's so important to have a team around you that loves you, appreciates you, and also is gonna call you out when it needs to be done. I just really wanna talk um, about what we can do to help make sure that everybody feels good about what we're doing here. Your support team can either make or break your journey. Whether your support team is on board or not, or the people at home are on board or not, that doesn't have to make up your support team. And I think that's really important for you to identify <clears throat> because oftentimes home, and I don't know your full situation, um, doesn't quite understand what's going on and what you're experiencing. There's an advantage and a disadvantage right. to being in the situation that you're in. The disadvantage that we'll call out is everybody else here is out of their home environment and they're all in a bubble. And so they get to focus on just this transformation and just their world. And they don't have to think about any of that. Myself, when I, as soon as I get home from a workout, I'm immediately mom, wife, taxi driver, and I still have things I have to do for work. And it, there's just no, off button it's just constantly go 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 like you might have a great day but in the back of your mind I got you're like I got to go home and my husband and I are fighting and my kids are doing this and I have laundry to do all these different things are playing in the back of your mind as you're trying to focus on yourself your role can really make or break her transformation now you're not responsible like you are responsible so if you fail it's on you if you win 
it's on you. But you can either support her or you can kind of pull her back. When she first told me about this, I'll be honest with you, I was pretty scared because I didn't know what to expect. And I'm like, you know, what's gonna happen with our marriage? I mean, is it gonna be the same? Is it gonna be different? Is it gonna be too overwhelming to comprehend for both of us? Because what's happening, she's gonna be at a point where she's bettering herself for you, for herself first, but also for you, which can feel threatening. It can feel like, okay, but who is this woman that I love so much and who is she gonna be once um, she becomes someone different? Since she started doing this, I can see she is a different person, you know, towards myself and our kids and herself. I mean, like you guys said, I mean, this is important for her to do well, so she's happy. I'm supporting her a million percent on this, I mean. I have a different point of view. Another time if I'm like, oh, I'm tired, I don't wanna to go to the workout tonight. He was like, don't go, it's fine, just, it's fine. And so, and it's just kind of like, I need the person who will tell me like, get up off of your ass and go to the workout. That's why, this is why you're doing this. Not somebody who's going to just be like, me, it's fine, you know? Have you communicated this to him? Like, I need you to push me. No, I know my heart is completely calloused and closed off because things haven't been great. And it's not just been since the show started. It's been a long time. And it's really hard to like want to even open up and tell him, here's what I need because for so long I've said, here's what I need. And I feel like it has fallen on deaf ears. And so I'm at that point, I'm just like, I don't know how to communicate. This isn't about trying to demonize you or, or to make anybody think that you're a villain or that I'm a villain. It's just it's what I feel. I mean, she's told me this before, how she feels and it's, <clears throat> I'm not saying it's all my fault, but it's partially my fault for not doing what she wants. Yeah. And I need to do my part to do that because if that makes her succeed or feel better about herself, I need to accept that and do it. There came a point where I, we were both comfortable Right? Chris had his roles on camera. I had my roles behind camera. We were comfortable. We were thriving. We were great. Suddenly, they pulled me out and said, we want you on camera, which was an opportunity for growth, like she has right now. I didn't even know I needed to grow. I'm like, and it was a scary, scary thing. Created a lot of turmoil in our marriage. And when Chris was open and he was vulnerable with me after a year or two, I mean, it was a while, Chris opened up and said, listen, my biggest fear is that you're going to outgrow me and you're not gonna need me anymore. But I think where other marriages can do what maybe we didn't, we never had individual goals and common goals that we 100% supported each other on from that time moving forward. So you're gonna to have to make sacrifices right now. I'm just gonna be 100% honest. You're gonna to have to make sacrifices but you got to think about all the years before you were, before this show where she's made sacrifices for you. Yes. You know what I mean? That's where you got to play where you went to work and she was home with the kids where she was doing the dishes, where she was doing the laundry and everything. And now that's kind of changed. She's not going to be able to be at home right now for a bit. She's not going to be able to be home to get dinner. She's not going to be able to be home to go get groceries. She's going to go get this and catch up to that. And at the end of the 90 days, there's going to be bumps in the road, but guess what? You do that. She's going to come and say, what now can I do for you? There's a wall, that's it. Yeah. Like a wall that the two of you need to break down. But in order to break down that wall and effectively communicate, you both need to be a safe place for the other. I just need you to understand that it's never, our arguments, it's never been about me not loving you. But we're in a space now that I'm learning to love myself. And that's hard. That's so hard for me. And when I say, here's what I need, it's not because I'm being rude or it's beneficially selfish. And I'm learning that that's okay. <laughs> I need to do my part and let you be you and let you do what you need to do 
and as I said before, I want you to succeed. This will help us grow. And I think it helps having kind of that outsider's opinion brought into it so that we can both learn where we need to grow and improve. Wherever we end up, we can have the open communication and continue to build and grow ourselves. What I hope for for Alice and her husband is accomplishing things they never thought they could accomplish together, you know, and, and building their relationship. Larger than life means hope. It is giving me a new outlook on life, a fresh start, and to discover who I am, and it's paying it forward.